I spend most of my time at the Delmar Cancer Center. And I felt like this topic was a good one um, because it is, we are starting to see signs of spring and warmer weather um, and people start getting motivated to, you know, incorporate some good health habits. Um, so you can notice with this first slide, the beautiful flowers um, just reminds you of spring so much. And we're going to do two recipes today. Um, we're going to do a layered southwestern salad and then a stir fry. So it incorporates a lot of vegetables. All right. Um, can I make these slides bigger? Sorry, <laughs> I can't really read them. So, all right, let's see. Otherwise, I have. That's good. Okay, thanks. Thank you. All right, so what does spring mean to you? We see this big chubby uh, robin, so that's a first sign. Um, but what are your thoughts? Um, so first of all, spring is on its way. The robins are back. The crocuses are surfacing. Um, we're experiencing more 50 degree days and a lot more rain. Um, but the sun is often shining and it's staying light out which is really nice, and then um, all um, good signs. So you can unmute if you'd like and just give a few ideas of what spring means to you. Um, it is like new beginnings, um, and feel free just to kind of kick this off. If you'd like to say something, you can. Well, I'll just start. Um, for me, it's taking more regular walks. Um, I try to walk an hour every day if I can get it in with everything in consideration, like the weather and the rain is on your, you know, I try to do that. Um, and so that's a real positive. Um, I know a lot of people are starting to relook at their food habits. Kind of reminds me of New Year's Eve, you know, you make your resolutions um, and you go forth with that, but then come springtime, um, we kind of relook at those things and see how we can continue them or improve them. Great. So a big way to start is to relook at your food habits, and we strive to follow a Mediterranean diet, um, and it's um, to incorporate a healthy lifestyle. Are some examples here of hydrating and getting exercise and getting outside, um, which is really good. All right, so the Mediterranean diet, what is it? I know you've heard this before, but it never hurts to refresh, um, but it's not clearly defined. It's primarily a plant-based diet, um, but it does include lean meats, um, poultry, fish, and then some meatless meals too. Um, it reflects a variety of eating habits traditionally practiced by populations in countries bordering the Mediterranean Sea. So you think of Greece and Italy, you know, where they use a lot of, they grow their olives and make olive oil and kind of um, just really go to market each day and get their fresh produce and really get away from processed foods. Processed foods are so expensive and they have a lot of sodium. Um, so if you can find easy recipes um, that you can do yourself, uh, it takes minimal preparation, you can be on your way to a Mediterranean diet. So it, a Mediterranean diet includes a daily intake of olive oil, fruits, vegetables, beans, and other legumes like lentils, nuts, herbs, and spices. And then other foods like, um, like animal proteins are eaten in smaller quantities. So that's why I chose to do a stir fry today because you're gonna use less meat. We're doing chicken, but the other day I did have, I checked out my freezer and I had two little skinny beef fillets so I thought, um, cut them up into little, little tiny pieces and cook that separately and added to a lot of vegetables. And that way it gives some flavor um, and texture change, but you're really getting most, mostly vegetables with that meal. Um, and I actually served it over whole wheat pasta for something different rather than the brown rice um, that I would tr traditionally do. Um, so other foods like animal proteins are eaten in smaller quantities with the preferred animal protein being from fish and seafood, but also poultry. And, you know, you can do pork and beef, but try to limit that to once or twice a week um, and smaller amounts, kind of more of a side dish than a main course. And then you want your diet health uh, rich in healthy fats from olive oil, avocado, nuts, 
and oily fish like salmon and even sardines, walnuts are also high in omega-3 fatty acids. And we recently had that presentation on omega-3 fatty acids. So we kind of went through all that. Um, but just to remind you that these are all part of a Mediterranean um, meal plan. All right, so um, the Mediterranean diet is a way of eating. So you, it helps to, by following that, it helps to reduce our risk of cardiovascular disease and also helps to lower the bad cholesterol, which is LDL. Because you're getting away from butter and the fat around meat, you're trimming that, you're taking the skin off a of chicken, um, you're not using whole fat dairy products, unless you've been advised for weight gain purposes. Um, and then it also it's rich in omega-3 fatty acids. And by including a lot of the fresh vegetables and fruit, it's also anti-inflammatory, which we talk about a lot. It helps to protect against cancer um, because this diet is high in phytonutrients, antioxidants, and omega-3 fatty acids. It's also associated with a reduced risk of kind of things that happen in our minds like Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. Um, they actually, there's a diet called MIND diet, M-I-N-D. And when you look at it, it compares very much to the Mediterranean. Um, and then high amounts of fiber in the diet can help um, slow digestion and help lower blood cholesterol. So it does help with our digestive system because you're getting a lot of whole grains in there. And you shouldn't be afraid of having a slice of whole grain bread or toast. It's, you know, I, I strive for like three servings of whole grains a day, maybe one at each meal, um, because they do contribute B vitamins, they have the fiber, and it also gives you a sense of satisfaction. You know, having something more, it's a complex carbohydrate, which is fine in the diet. When we talk about simple carbohydrates, we try to reduce our intake as best we can, and that's from added sugar and candies and sweet and syrupy kind of things. Um, so that's the area to work on. And it's really for weight control too, why people try to cut those, cut down on those. They're just empty calorie foods. They don't contribute any nutrition. And I know it's hard with the holidays. We've got Easter coming up. So you've got maybe Easter candy for the grandkids or your own children and got to try and like avoid it yourself if you can. If you do get it, try to get dark chocolate. So once in a while, you know, a piece here and there. Actually, I'm fine. My little granddaughter loves dark chocolate, so don't be afraid to buy that for them. Um, they may not even know the difference. Um, so again, here's the Mediterranean diet kind of in a pyramid form. So the way bottom there, it's got little people, and that just shows that's when we say Mediterranean diet slash lifestyle. That's where the lifestyle part is you want to be around people, um, you want to socialize, you want to be involved in groups, or if you can't be in groups, you can do it virtually. Um, some people like here, they're showing dancing, family meal time, um, and, and that sort. So staying in touch with friends, because that helps our mind too, that we don't want to be isolated. Um, I was watching a movie recently and they said humans, um, they like their tribes, you know, so it means they like to be around people versus animals, they can go independent too. Um, so anyhow, kind of a weird analogy, but I do believe that we need each other. So, um, and then, you know, when you do your meal planning, um, you want to base every meal that includes some fruit, vegetables, whole grains, um, whole grain breads, brown rice, quinoa, and bulgur. Um, there's a whole variety of whole grains. And if you're not sure, when you look at a package of like a bread package or whatever, you know, you might pasta, you want the first ingredient to say whole, W-H-O-L-E, whole wheat or whole oats or, you know, things like that. You don't want it to say refined because that means it's been processed and took the endosperm and other, the bran out of it. So you want the benefits of the whole, whole fiber. Um, and then also your olive oil. And I mentioned this before, but when you buy olive oil, um, check the ingredient panel. You want it to be 100% extra virgin olive oil. Don't go by price. I mean, sometimes I know we're all very conscious of food costs and we're trying to you know, get things that are on sale. But with olive oil, um, if one's on sale, okay, look at the ingredient panel, but you want it to be 100% olive oil. 
some of the cheaper olive oils have soybean mixed in with it, so it's very uh, deceiving. Um, and then, you know, nuts are really, really good too. Like the big thing is walnuts and almonds, even cashews, they're a source of protein. Um, you know, if you're trying to practice weight control, a lot of people are like, oh, I need to lose five or 10 pounds. You're, if you're trying to get from meal to meal, and maybe from lunch to dinner, it's a little bit maybe hard for you. Maybe measure out like a little, like a quarter cup of almonds and snack in those, you know, one at a time, chew it real well. Those um, nuts then can satisfy us and take away that um, hunger urge and get you to dinner where you're not really needing to snack. Some people need to snack. I'm kind of talking more survivorship right now. But, you know, there are people at the cancer center who have a decreased appetite. They call it early satiety. They fill up quickly. And then we are promoting small, frequent meals and snacks. So I'm kind of talking two different ways here. Kind of talking more the survivorship where you're pretty much done with treatment and you're trying to build up your a healthy lifestyle for yourself, um, where you're incorporating exercise, healthy food habits, making time for yourself so that you can decrease stress and striving for a good night's sleep too. Um, and so the other things like eating fish twice a week, then you don't need to take a fish oil supplement. We're not really big on taking supplements. Um, even after you're done with treatment, the American Cancer Society says don't rely on supplements. Try to just get it from food itself. So if you're eating a variety and you're eating for color, you'll meet your nutritional needs. Um, the only thing I take is vitamin D and calcium, and that's because it was recommended to me for bone health. So whatever your doctor tells you, you know, follow that, like your medical oncologist. Um, so eating fish twice a week, salmon's really good. Um, you know, even tuna, if you're not a big fish eater, tuna qualifies as well. Um, we were talking about getting it packed in water. Um, eat moderate portions of cheese and yogurt daily to weekly, and people do have. Um, like if you have like breast cancer, big push to include more dairy in your diet for the bone health. Um, so, you know, from a weight control standpoint, try to get low fat dairy, um, skim milk, a low fat yogurt. Um, and then if you can get a reduced fat cheese too, that would be good. Um, and then moderate portions of poultry and eggs, um, are good. They, the eggs can make for a meatless meal, which you want to include sometimes. Um, eat red meat sparingly, um, and usually it's, they say a three ounce portion is about the size of your, the palm of your hand, but you can even go a little less. Like say you're making a soup or a chili, where maybe you're incorporating beans into it, that's protein. And then you can use half the package or even a third of the package of if you were going to do like a ground beef in there. Um, so looking for ways to use less of the meat and then incorporate more like beans and then quinoa, things that contain some protein. Um, and then drinking plenty of water. You also don't want to go overboard with water either. Um, that can affect our electrolytes. So at the cancer center, we're recommending eight, eight ounce glasses of liquid a day, which is 64 ounces. So that's a good number to strive for. Don't feel like going super over that, um, sometimes it cannot be so good for you. So um, be careful with that, but do drink your water. Um, it's really important. And I know I've said this before as kids, like my age group, we didn't carry water bottles around. You know, if we were outside playing, we'd go to the hose and have some water, you know. I think a lot of people can relate to that. But now it is, they find how important it is to stay hydrated. So it's a good thing. And then try to be active every day. If you're newly done with treatment, um, your body has gone through a lot. So you can you have to take baby steps, you know, like maybe if you want to start a walking program, start with like maybe 15 minutes or just going around the block is really good. Do it a couple times a day if you feel up for it. And I also say go with somebody. Um, I think that's helpful because you don't know if you get tired or maybe dizzy you know, you would want somebody with you just while you're gaining your strength. And even like after radiation, that has a big effect too. You, it does stuff. I remember when I went through radiation, I like a month later, I tried riding my bike and I was able to, but when I got off, oh, my legs felt like jelly. 
And then it just took another month or two and then I was back to normal. But there, it's weird how things affect you. Um, and it gives fatigue, but you know, with some of this fatigue, getting a little exercise helps relieve the fatigue. So do what's right for you. And also before you start any form of exercise program, check with your doctor so they can give you some guidance too on what you might expect from what you've been through. So yeah, all right. Um, let's see. All right, so jumpstart diet changes. So the big thing is getting away from butter. You know, maybe years ago you were sauteing vegetables and put a little, you know, tablespoon or teaspoon of butter in the pan. Get away from that. Olive oil works perfectly well. And also maybe roasting vegetables, cutting up your vegetables, putting them in a bowl, doing a drizzle, light, a light drizzle of olive oil, tossing it, and then spread it out on a sheet pan. I usually use parchment paper. It's just a much easier cleanup. Um, and then also be careful when you're using parchment paper. Yeah, I might do 400 degrees, but don't get that pan too close to the heating element because the paper could catch on fire. So kind of have it more middle of the oven. So be careful of things like that. But more is not better. Go lightly because you're getting calories from using the um, olive oil as well. And then eat more fruits and vegetables. Um, have them as a snack or part of your meal. They fill you up. They give you good satisfaction. And also that's where you're getting a lot of your vitamins and minerals. And so eat for color, meaning include a lot of different colors in your diet. So here's an example. This is just a little display. And so here I've got something purple, red onion. Got red from a red pepper, a carrot, green. You know, that's what you want. You want to try to include a bunch of different colors. And let's see. Um, and then we talked about whole grains. Like a lot of people are switching from regular pasta to whole grain pasta or chickpea pasta. There's um, all different kinds of pastas now that give you a little bit more nutrition. Um, so look for that. Try something new. Um, Substitute a fish meal for red meat. Um, so try different things um, with fish. I think the last time we were here, we did a salmon, a couple salmon recipes, and those would be um, through Living Well, you would find that. Um, and then just watch for high fat dairy. Try to use something low fat. So like today I have, um, well, I wanted to get plain yogurt, but where I was shopping didn't have a small enough container. It was a big one. So I just found light sour cream. So I went that route, which is fine. Um, but, you know, sour cream and plain yogurt can be interchanged, substituted, so you can do that. Um, and then just make small swaps for foods you're already eating. So, for example, instead of using mayonnaise on your sandwich, you could even try hummus. Hummus is really good. Um, mix beans or legumes into meat dishes, slowly decreasing the amount of meat. So, like the salad we're doing, I, I am cooking up. Oh, no, I'm, there's no meat in it. Um, it's just two different types of beans. Um, we're doing chicken for the stir fry. So that's a way to get a meatless meal. So we'll demonstrate that in a little bit. Um, what else I wanted to say? Oh, I, and also like for a sandwich, um, you could even just try like a Dijon mustard on the bread, like toast the whole grain bread, put some Dijon mustard, and then have your whatever you're going to have in your sandwich. And you're cutting out that mayonnaise um, or just use a lot less. Try weaning, you know, from that. All right, and then here again, we talk about the whole grains. Um, they provide fiber, phytonutrients, and your B vitamins. Um, try using quinoa. I'll show you what I used. Um, let me grab a package here. So sometimes these products take a little bit longer as an extra step to cook. Um, it's really just boiling water, pretty much. But I found this at a store. It said 90 second um, brown rice. So looking at the ingredients, it says water, whole grain, brown rice, and a little canola oil. So that would be fine to use. It's a whole grain, um, just making life a little easier sometimes. Um, but yeah, there's different things. And we talked about the different pastas. You can try those. Um, and then oats too. Oats are a whole grain and there's a lot you can do. Um, you know, especially if you like a dessert and you're like, oh, I don't want all that extra stuff, you could just cut up some fruit and then make kind of like an oatmeal topping, like a little cobbler. But I always tweak those recipes. I try to 
cut way down on the fat in the cobbler part. Um, you could even try just sprinkling the oats on top, maybe some chopped nuts and then toast it. And then um, you could even serve it with like a little dot of frozen yogurt even, you know, but berries work really well. You can buy a bag of mixed berries and so I don't put sugar in that. So when I do something like that, I take a bag of frozen mixed berries. I put it in a skillet just to warm it up and I just squeeze lemon juice on it. Sometimes I'll take a little cornstarch and mix it with the lemon juice or water just to have a little thicker consistency, but I don't add sugar to it. I feel like the berries are sweet enough and once they cook down, they congeal, get thicker. And I just pour that into a casserole and then you can just sprinkle the oats and nuts on top. If you want to put a couple dots of a little bit of butter on it, you could, but I would try not let it just toast up. It's almost like a low fat granola you're putting on top and then just bake it. Um, and that can be really good. And I've showed in classes before where I've taken a whole container of blueberries. It's just a pint of blueberries and put it in a little saucer with just a teeny bit of water and let it cook on low and it cooks up. It's like a fruit compo. So it becomes sweet and condensed, but I didn't add any sugar and you can pour that warm mixture over yogurt um, or um, whatever, you know, even oatmeal if you wanted, um, things like that. So kind of play around with things, but I try to avoid added sugar to some of those kind of desserts. Um, and then your plant proteins, you know, the nuts and seeds and nut butters, meaning like peanut butter or almond sun butter, you know, are very good. Um, and then you've got your legumes. So today I have a can of black beans. And then I have, I was trying to get pinto beans, but all I could find was um, chili beans, which I think are very similar, probably the same thing. So we're going to add that to the salad. Um, but I just drained them and then rinsed them and put them back in the can just so I could show you. Um, and then, but there's a variety of beans, cannellini, red beans, do whatever you want. And like the cannellini beans, we've um, blenderized and made into a hummus. Um, and that's really not hard at all, or like a bean dip. So we've got recipes on the, our website with that. Um, okay, let's see. Um, this is just an example of how the vegetables and fruits are divided into different colors. So you've got your orange, your yellow, your green, your purple, your red, um, and then they're categorized. It's just to give you ideas of how to incorporate color into your meals. Um, and it's just, you know, like here today we have tomatoes for the red and we've got red pepper we're using. And then the purple was the red onion and yellow is the corn and then green is zucchini and avocado. So it, it really, it just compiles itself. I like to make like for Easter, I'm bringing a couple salads. And so I'm gonna make, um, to look for a recipe, but I, it's a red cabbage coleslaw. And that way I'm using red cabbage and some green coleslaw or green cabbage, and then some carrots. Um, I might just make my own recipe, but you know, it's a way to get cruciferous vegetables from the cabbage and then getting that purple color that we don't use so much. Um, but I'll figure that out by Saturday, we're doing it. Um, yeah, so it just gives you an example. All right, so some examples of breakfast ideas for a Mediterranean diet. So these are a little bit out of the box. Um, a sweet potato hash made with ednami and sweet potatoes and peppers. Um, you could even do that for a dinner meal too. Maybe throw some beans in there as well. Um, Greek yogurt with berries and some seeds or even nuts um, is good. Um, breakfast burrito made with black beans, veggies, tomato, and avocado. You can make that up yourself. Get a whole grain tortilla and then put your mixture together and roll it up. Um, and that would be good. Warm it up then afterwards. Oatmeal with peanut butter and chia seeds for added protein. Um, sauteed spinach, onion, pepper, omelet with feta. That might sound like a little too intense flavors for breakfast. So you could try it for another meal. I think dinner would work out really well. All right, and then here's some lunch and dinner ideas. A lento spinach soup, avocado chickpea salad, wild rice with ednami and tofu, chickpea salad sandwich, like maybe instead of tuna salad. But on the other hand, if you just prefer to stick with tuna salad, 
you can put some red onion in that, some chopped up celery, a uh, little Dijon mustard. Um, you know, you can add whatever you want to your tuna to get the vegetables in. Maybe serve it on whole grain bread with tomato and slice, uh, slice of tomato and some lettuce. Um, so you'll get a few vegetables that way. Um, you could do a Greek roasted veggie pita pizza. So get a flat bread, try to get whole grain. You know, they do sell like that non bread in a whole grain. Um, so you can even use that as your crust and then kind of go from there, make your own little flat bread. Um, quinoa protein patties or black bean or Greek burgers, um, lentil and Greek salad with feta and Greek olives. Like, or maybe that says grape salad, but like a Greek salad, um, what, like in the summer when the produce is in, it's just like chopped up or cut up um, tomatoes, cucumber, red onion in a vinaigrette. And it's so good. And you could add a little oregano if you want, um, maybe palmata olives added to it. And it's really goes with a lot. It's a good accompaniment to a lot of dishes. And then roasted lemon and garlic chicken with potatoes and carrots. Um, sounds great. We were just at a Greek restaurant um, Saturday night and the food was so good, but they used a lot of chicken and lemons and olive oil and um, their roasted potatoes and then eggplant roasted like, you know, you can kind of just have a theme there with your meal um, and then whole wheat pasta with capers, garlic and um, breadcrumbs. What I like to do is I'll take a little skillet, put some olive oil and then I'll put um, like the I get those. Well, I've got two different ways. I cut up tomatoes, zucchini, um, red, red peppers, and just saute that. Um, and then you can add it to pasta if you want. But in other ways, I just get a little baking dish, put a little drizzle of olive oil, and I get those cherry tomatoes on a stem. And I leave them on the stem. I just set them in this baking dish with chunks, a lot of chunks of garlic. And I'll throw zucchini chopped up in there too and let it just roast. And then in the meantime, I'll cook the whole wheat pasta. And then um, just pour that, take that stem off the tomatoes, but just pour all that onto your pasta and it's juiciness from the tomatoes and it's so good. And you're getting, it's not high in sodium at all because you didn't add any salt and you're getting away from pre-prepared tomato sauces and then maybe have chicken on the side or however you want to do it. Um, it's really good. And then some snack ideas. Uh, Roasted red pepper hummus, um, roasted chickpeas, ednami, some trail mix. You can make it yourself. Fruits and nuts, chopped vegetables, and tomato and mozzarella skewers, which are really easy to do. They sell those little pearls of mozzarella. Put a basil leaf in between and a tomato, and then you could drizzle some balsamic vinegar over it. And if you wanted to have more of a balsamic reduction, you can put in a small skillet or you can buy it that way too but you could put pour the balsamic vinegar in a little skillet and put it on low and it'll reduce itself and get kind of syrupy and you're not adi adding anything else and you can just drizzle that over your tomato mixture some stores do carry a uh, balsamic reduction but check the label because you don't want anything with added ingredients like added sugar it's unnecessary you don't need it but there's ones out there that don't add sugar so you got to just kind of read the ingredients and then herbs are really good. Um, some people now are starting to think about starting a herb garden. Um, so that's kind of fun. It's a sign of spring, um, but we're using today some fresh cilantro um, to give some extra flavor, but like basil and dill are really good in meals, rosemary. So kind of pick your favorites and maybe start those in a little pot, or you can get some already planted and already with plants forming. So you make a pesto, so there's the recipe. I don't know, it's like, I I don't know, it might say, I can't really read it, but it might say pine nuts, but a lot of times I use slivered almonds and then garlic, fresh basil and a little olive oil and just blenderize it and you've made yourself a little pesto. Um, I know that some stores sell like a basil pesto um, but read the ingredients, make sure it's, you know, not with a lot of added other stuff in it because you could just make your own. Um, and then no time to cook, just keep your breakfast simple. Um, and then, you know, if you have a little bit of time, you could get toasted whole grain bread. 
You can add nut butters or avocado toast is really good. If you don't want to put the egg on, if you don't have time to cook it, just do the whole grain toast, the avocado, slice of tomato, maybe put a little balsamic on that and can be really satisfying. Um, you can make your own overnight oats or just make up some oatmeal and use it for a few different breakfasts. Um, and you can add some yogurt to it if you want um, and then nuts. So keep it simple. You know, it doesn't, these meals do not have to be elaborate. Um, what I did for lunch the other day, I cooked that stir fry I was telling you, and I just took a container of those vegetables that were left and I had those for lunch and it was really good. And then just learn to utilize lentils and beans. Um, beans have become so popular and you can, I would get, try to get the no salt variety if you're getting cans, but then we've had previous bean classes where we just took a package with a chopped up onion and a quart of water and put it in a slow cooker on low and it takes probably four to six hours um, and it slow cooks and they're nice and shiny and done and you can get a lot of meals out of that. So it's very inexpensive. A package of beans, like a 16 ounce is like $1.99. And people are looking for some low cost um, meals um, because boy, food cost has gone up. Everything has. Uh, so I think people are saying don't waste food. Try to re keep repurposing it just for a couple days. You want to keep food safety in mind. Yeah, I mean, utilize your freezer. Um, you know, if you make something and your plans change, you're not, you know, be able to have it for other days. You can portion it into a little container. Always label and date it because food takes on a different look when it's frozen. But that way you'll have another meal um, and use it up. And right now what I'm trying to do is just keep my refrigerator minimized. So I'm using stuff up. I have a handle on what's in there and we'll make dishes to use up the produce. Um, but then I'll watch for sales at the grocery store if they have meat on sale. When I say meat, it means poultry, fish, pork. And then I get it while it's on sale and put it in my freezer. So I always have something like that on hand and then um, utilize what vegetables I have. And then if I don't have, like say you want to use a sweet potato, I don't have that. Maybe you can switch gears and do like a brown rice or um, a whole grain pasta to complement the dish. So just, um, you know, here's just a review of what we were talking about is, you know, Eat it following the Mediterranean, get plenty of water, and then move more, getting your exercise plan. So a few other things, um, let's see. Five main aspects of personal health is your physical, emotional, social, spiritual, and intellectual. So physical is getting your daily exercise. Emotional is that you feel happy, like you are have a positive outlook. Um, and sometimes just being connected with people helps keep you elevated that way. Um, and then the social is the same thing. Make plans with people. So even if it's walking with somebody, take a walk with someone, um, you know, things like that. It doesn't have to be real elaborate. Um, spiritual and then intellectual, like read or try something new, learn a new hobby. Um, and in, in order to be considered well, it's imperative for none of these areas to be neglected. <laughs> So what does this mean to you? Um, and so for me, I feel like my daily mantra is get my, so like on a Saturday, go for my walk, get that in, eat healthy. Um, I check my weight, <laughs> not all, not every day, but I want to make sure I'm not gaining weight. I want to either stay where I'm at or I wouldn't mind losing a couple pounds, but you know what I mean? Everyone has their goals and, um, and then just have plans, you know, so you're not just not doing anything and, you know, even reading a book you've been putting off, like just having some quality time for you. It keeps lower stress. It's also you're checking off your list. I got that book done or I'm now wanting to learn a new hobby. I want to learn watercoloring. So like, you know, always be thinking ahead on things you might want to take on. Um, keep things simple and make time for yourself each day to reflect on how to incorporate and, and just be happy. Um, Here's just that balancing of stones where what are the important factors to you for good health? Um, and again, it's the balanced diet, good nutrition, staying hydrated. Um, this sounds funny, but personal cleanliness and good hygiene, like 
taking a shower every day and um, fixing yourself up, you know, not just staying in your pajamas or I don't know, it helps elevate our mood when we're like ready for the day, um, regular exercise, getting a good night's sleep, which we'll talk about, um, which can be very challenging sometimes for people. Um, and then just find figuring out what you want to do for exercise. Everyone has their thing. Um, and then the American Cancer Society recommends at least 150 minutes per week of moderate um, intensity aerobic exercise. Um, and so some examples of aerobic exercise is walking, jogging, cycling, and swimming. Find what works for you. And then two to three resistance exercises, um, lifting and resistance. I don't know, it can be as simple as taking cans of vegetables and moving your arms, you know, it doesn't have to be going to the gym. Not everyone likes going to the gym. I'm one of those people. I would rather do things on my own, you know. Uh, but the aerobic exercise helps strengthen your heart and your lungs. So it's really good to keep up with that. Um, bike riding, that's a fun one too. But again, I like to go, my husband and I will go bike riding together and he always leads because I don't know, I, I'm a follower more with that kind of thing. Um, and then cancer related fatigue is different from fatigue experienced by people without cancer. So it doesn't really get better with rest. Um, it's something that your body has to work through. And an example is the radiation. Like, yeah, you listen to your body and you rest, but you know, it's not just going to go away. It, it has to kind of work itself out of you. But trying to take that little walk can help with the fatigue. So again, um, see what works for you. Um, and always check with your doctor to see what you can now move forward with. So here's some benefits of exercise. Um, sleep. Sleep for some people can be very challenging and they're saying, you know, try to have a routine, go to bed about the same time, prepare yourself for sleep, like turning off devices, like at least a half hour before. I sometimes find I want to turn my phone off because sometimes I get texts and I'm like, why are people that things late, you know, but then I kind of have to leave it on because I want my alarm to go off, but I don't know, it's, I don't like the late night texting. Um, and I don't know, like make your bedroom a sanctuary where there's not a lot of stuff to distract you, kind of a calming atmosphere. Change the paint color if you want to make it more soothing. Some people take a hot shower or even a bath to relax themselves, um, dim the lights in the evening, and then have a dark room, like have darkening curtains that can help. I notice um, my husband's alarm clock is bright. So I'm going to now turn it the other way. <laughs> um, but I know you got to look for those little things where there's a light source. And then also for safety is have a night light, like in the hallway. Because I know for myself, my dog sometimes on the bedroom floor. <laughs> and if I get up in the middle of the night, you could easily trip over the dog. So you do need a little bit of light for, for, for safety so you don't trip or anything. Um, and just not eating late at night, a heavy meal, that can have something to do with it. Some, I don't know, I'm not really one to do a sleep supplement. Um, I think that's something you would ask your doctor, but melatonin works for some people. I don't really like taking that stuff. Um, and even some of your medications, you can check with your doctor if it does have an effect of making you non-drowsy. So that's something. Um, and then also avoiding late naps. Like if you rest, you're resting, but you don't have to actually fall asleep um, because taking a nap too late can make it hard to fall asleep as well. Um, trying to get to the recipe, so I'm kind of speeding up here. So just in conclusion, um, getting enough sleep, eat a healthy diet, being physically active, monitor your weight, um, avoid smoking, limit alcohol, and control stress as best you can. And are there any questions before we do the two recipes? Okay, all right, well, very good. So we will get this going. Should I? Okay, thank you. All right, so the first recipe is a layered Southwestern salad. 
Um, I am using a romaine salad, but you could use something a little darker, like uh, mixed greens. But I like the romaine for this recipe because it's crispy, um, has a little crunch to it. Here's the romaine. Um, I do have to take some corn off the cob. So I use this little tool called the corn kernel cutter. And I like to use fresh corn because it adds some nice crunchiness to it. And if I'm making a soup, I like to, if I can get it, I like to use fresh corn as well versus canned or even frozen. Frozen would probably be the next alternative. Um, but I like it to have that crispy crunchiness. It has a fresh flavor that way. That's one. And then we're going to do another one. Zip it down. Some people use a knife. Work, but be really careful. Um, always have your head down when you're doing things that are sharp so you don't slip and cut yourself. No one wants to be cut. So. Especially people who may have had breast cancer, you want to protect the arm that's on the side where your breast cancer was so you don't risk the chance of lymphedema. So always be really careful what you're doing. Avoid cutting. Okay. All right, I'm set that aside. Um, All right, in a medium bowl, we're going to stir together sour cream. So one cup of sour cream. I just kind of guesstimate. Um, this is a 16 ounce container, so I'll just use half. Put it in here. Less to wash. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to add some garlic. So we're going to press some fresh garlic. Calls for one clove. I'm going to use a couple just because of flavor. I'll just do two. I peeled it first just so it would be a little bit easier to do the press. And then it called for lemon zest, but I'm just going to do some juice just to thin it a little bit. Lime, lime juice. I think I said lemon, but I meant lime. <laughs> lime juice. And so you just cut it in half. Put it face down where the holes are on your citrus press. Give it a squeeze. Lime juice is always good with um, type food, southwestern food. We might add more. We'll see what the consistency is. And then we're adding the cilantro. I know some people don't care for cilantro. I thought that I didn't, but I do like it. So try it again. Um, sometimes. Other people say they don't like it, and you got to try it for yourself. A little pepper in there. I like pepper, so I don't mind. Do I just shake it in? Yeah, so now next we're going to add some chopped tomatoes. I use Campari tomatoes, it, um, just whatever looked good in the store. You could use cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes, Rome tomato, Roma tomatoes. It's all what looks good. Put that in there. Okay, so now we're going to do a can of black beans in a bowl. And we're going to use half of a container of fresh salsa. We're going to mix that together. This is a mild, fresh cut salsa. I'm going to use the other half a little bit. Okay, get together. And then we're going to spoon this over the tomatoes. Now our layers are forming. So here we got some good red color vegetable, and then we've got some beans for protein. Oh, and then use the same bowl. Let's say um, 
Now we're going to add the corn. Okay, and then let's see, in the same bowl, combine pinto beans and the rest of the salsa. That's another layer. So far, it's going together pretty easily. Now, if you get some ideas here, you could even bring it to Easter if you wanted. <laughs> and the last thing is um, we do have to add avocado. I think I'm going to do it last. My avocados aren't real soft, um, but I'm going to put cheese. It didn't really call for that in the recipe, but I think a lot of people like some cheese on their Southwest um, salad. So we'll add that. And then we're going to add the sour cream mixture. So it was just, it, didn't, it does call for chili powder, but I didn't really see when to add it. So I'm going to add it now to this a little. Okay. Yeah, people, um, we like avocado. It's a really good food to include. It's got a lot of healthy fat and so much you can do with it. Keep it like right here. And then the last thing is um, you just take tortilla strips. Now the recipe tells you how to make them, but I just got tostito, tostado shells um, and then just break them up that way because you want them crunchy so they hold up to the moisture. But it gives you a nice variety of flavors then. And then we could top um, either you can get guacamole or top it with chopped up avocado at the end. Two more. So that's it. Here we put a little bit rest of the well, I do have red onion. I'll just put a little bit on top. Um, Sometimes I let people just add that themselves, but we'll just put a little bit for color. Oh. All right, so that's one recipe, the Southwest salad. So that would be tasty. Um, set it aside. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just going to clean up my area just a little bit, and then we're going to. Do the stir fry next. Oh. Okay, so, um, so what I did, I cut all my vegetables up first. So we have broccoli, cauliflower, yellow onion, zucchini, carrots, red pepper. I didn't have, I couldn't get snow peas, but that's okay. Um, Right, so this is the brown rice that was in that package. You just microwave it for 90, 90 seconds. So that part's done. I just layered it in the bottom of this pan. And then I'm going to add the vegetables. So when you do the vegetables, I start off with the onion first because I want that to be sauteed and a little bit browned. I kind of forgot these were cooking, so I cooked them a little longer than I thought. Um, so I would have cut down the cooking time. But I had it going while we we're talking, so it's hard to do two things at once. Great. Right, so there's that. So now it's just a variety of vegetables. And some people could eat it just like this because it's tasty rice and some vegetables. But we do have, I'm gonna put a little pepper on this seasoning. But then I cut up chicken. I used two chicken breasts and I found in our refrigerator a little teriyaki sauce. So I thought, well, we'll add it for a little flavor because I really didn't 
too much else with flavor. I didn't add salt per se to the vegetables or anything. But this way it'll give a little bit extra flavor and this on top. And then the last thing, if you want, you can top it with um, cashews. So we'll put some sprinkle down here. Get a little extra protein that way. That's that. Um, I did when I was cooking the vegetables. So I, I just put a little bit of oil in and then sauteed the onion and then that was it. So I have this um, vegetable broth that I added to the vegetables so that they could cook, kind of steam a little bit to speed up the cooking part. You don't have to do that, but that way you're not adding more oil, which is a good thing. So um, yeah, so that is it. And the recipes are yep, they're already posted in the chat. Are posted in the chat. Yep. So you can do this and then just know like with any recipe, you can tweak things. You can take ingredients out or add them however you want to do. Maybe you don't want to add cashews. Maybe you want to do walnuts or maybe no nuts, and that's okay. Um, it's your own. 